in 1990, an Italian geologist named Angelo Pitoni would find an unusual stone while visiting Sierra Leone, a mysterious artifact that has baffled all who have studied it. A local Fuller chief was said to have given it to Pitoni, a blue stone with mysterious white lines upon its surface. After returning to Europe, Pitoni took the stone to the Institute of Natural Sciences of Geneva and then University La Sapienza in Rome for further analysis. To his surprise, tests revealed that it was not a turquoise or indeed anything that could officially be identified. Furthermore, the blue stone didn't correspond to any known mineral. But the most intriguing thing is its color. Researchers still do not understand how the stone has acquired or retained its color. This even though several universities and laboratories have analyzed the artifact at great length. It seems its color remains a mystery. Mysteriously, at the University of Utrecht, the stone underwent several tests with use of strong acids, but none of the acids could affect the stone. It was even heated to over 3000 degrees Celsius, yet its composition wasn't altered. When a small piece of the stone was pulverized and viewed under the microscope, it curiously lost its color. Now known as the Sky Stone, according to analysis, an amazing 77.17% of the stone is somehow made of pure oxygen. The remaining percentage was divided between carbon, calcium, and another unknown element. When researchers crushed a piece of the sky rock and mixed it with acetone, hexane, and methylene, and then enhanced the extractions with ultrasound, they were eventually able to locate an organic compound that is currently unknown to science. Dated at 55,000 years old, just what is the sky stone? How could it possibly be made mostly of oxygen? Is this stone a past remnant left by a once advanced civilization? Or maybe its origins are not even local to Earth? Amazingly, it seems that Pitoni's sky stone is not unique. There has in fact been similar finds in other places of the Earth, most notably Brazil. The other sample of sky stone was submitted to GRS Swiss Labs for testing and analysis by an anonymous dealer. Intrigued, American artist and designer Jared Collins tried to buy the small cutaway piece from the dealer so he could study it further, but the dealer refused to sell it. He wouldn't even name a price for the larger full stone. It seems there are indeed other exhibits of this curious stone made mostly of pure oxygen in existence, yet the mystery surrounding their makeup and origin persists to this day. There are many ancient ruins that were not only beyond the capabilities of the claimed creators, but we postulate were simply re-inhabited allowing the far more primitive and we feel far more recent inhabitants to flourish, developing these sanctuaries, often heavily fortified temples, to a point where they were able to leave their own mark upon these locations. An archaeological legacy left after the original creators of said sites were seemingly wiped out, with their own archaeological legacies simply washed away by the seas of our planet. These remnants have allowed academia to simply disregard the feat of engineering such incredibly large sites would have required, pinning such efforts to a more suitable candidate. After researching many such sites, backed up by the megalithic accomplishments that they still possess, one will begin to notice a pattern, an illogical and contradictory history for these groups, often invaded by a similarly capable and heavily studied group. The question is, why were a group who were apparently capable of building such a site so easily dominated by another which existed at the same era of history? One would have imagined that if they were indeed the builders of said sites, that they would have also been able to have created substantial defense systems, yet these are invariably absent from nearly all of these sites, with just the weather-resistant megaliths and indeed the condition of the sites most probably very similar to how they are found today. And Chan Chan is no exception. Believed to have been constructed around 850 AD, based on archaeological finds, subsequently claimed as having been constructed by the Chimu. Although this explanation for the enormous site is conveniently absent any explanation as to how this society achieved such incredible feats of ancient engineering. 
it became the Chamur Empire's capital city, with an estimated population of 40 to 60,000 people when invaded by the Inca. After the Inca captured the Chamu around 1470 AD, Chan Chan was abandoned and by 1535 AD again became a ruin of history. Surviving into modern day and beyond, while no longer a teeming capital city, Chan Chan was still well known for its great riches and was consequently looted by the Spanish treasure hunters. With an indication of the creator's wealth seen in a 16th century list of items looted from a burial tomb, a treasure equivalent to 80,000 pesos of gold was recovered, nearly 5 million US dollars in gold. Incredibly intricate stone-cut engravings rest alongside massive fortified walls, and there is most likely many other tombs in the site, which not only predate this later re-inhabitation, but are probably also filled to the rafters with gold, an expression of these original creators' power, and again, contradictory to the Chamu's claim to such a site. Furthermore, Chan Chan is in a particularly arid section of the coastal desert of northern Peru, and due to the lack of rain in this area, the major source of non-salted water was in the form of rivers carrying surface runoff from the Andes. This runoff allowed for the control of land and water through irrigation systems. The city of Chan Chan spanned 20 square kilometers and had a dense urban center of 6 square kilometers. This contained extravagant ciudadelas, ciudadelas being the large architectural masterpieces which house plazas, storerooms, and burial platforms for the royals. Who were the original builders of Chan Chan? Were they, like we postulate, wiped out during a disaster? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We have long conjectured that many ancient ruins found throughout the world are not what they seem. Attributed to groups within known and permitted history, we feel, however, that the evidence to suggest that they were, in fact, relics of an as-yet unearthed advanced civilization is now overwhelming. Many sites we cover escape modern understanding or explanation. Gigantic multi-ton megaliths often somehow mysteriously quarried and transported from quarry sites sometimes hundreds of miles away from where we find them today. Such realities are undeniable, and the lack of any explanation as to how our more primitive ancient ancestors accomplished such tasks, we feel, remains elusive due to said site's origins actually being a far more capable, far more progressive, now lost civilization who were clearly once capable of such incredible feats. However, although many sites are often attributed to what we perceive were mere re-inhabitants and the archaeological footprint that they left behind, excavated and permitted to be studied in depth, pinned as the creators of said sites. However, the relic we are focusing on in the following video, an ancient artifact left by those who possibly created the site itself. Majorca, a favorite with holidaymakers, yet alas, what many do not pursue while on the island is the inexplicable stone megaliths which litter its tropical shores. Academically attested as a 3,200-year-old relic, we feel, however, that the sword, although clearly of a remarkable preservation, is in fact far older than this, and those who have investigated the site and said relic have concluded that the only possible origin of this incredible object was that of a now lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization. Now known as the Taliot Sword, it is an astonishing ancient weapon, once somehow made far within antiquity, created to incredibly high standards, and we feel the reason the sword has survived so long is merely testament to the quality of the sword and indeed the past abilities of its creator. Recently discovered by a team of experts digging at the archaeological site known as Talio de Seralda Se Abelis, found within Puig Poyent, a municipality on Majorca. The site is comprised of several stone megaliths, 
which are claimed to date back anywhere from 1000 to 6000 BC. We, however, hypothesize that the sword is far older than even these unusually generous, academically dated estimates. The sword was found near one of the stone megaliths, known locally as a taliot, hence the sword's name. Built by the mysterious Taliotic culture, which we feel is the name given to lost civilization that many funded individuals continue to try and dismiss, claiming that it was located within permitted timelines. Labeled by some as the Spanish Excalibur, it is undoubtedly an incredible artifact and one which sheds precious light upon the capabilities of a now lost civilization. Work is now underway at the site and is pegged to continue for the next few decades. Initially explored by historian and archaeologist Guillem Bordoy in the 1950s, it was in mid-September, as the researchers were readying the museum at the site, that the team found the sword. Who made the Taliot sword? How old are the megalithic sites upon the island of Majorca? Are we looking at an artifact left by a now lost civilization? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.